chairs at the back if you're more comfortable in the chair you're welcome to sit please, please feel free to sit in the chair whenever you want to get up from the floor okay a little quick introduction thank you it will take more time than we have my name is Bhakti Brihat Bhagavat Swami, and uh, this body was born in Durban in South Africa when the British were ruling India in the 1800s for the first uh, ship that left was from Tamil Nadu called the Truro. So they took people from Kerala, Tamil Nadu, and they landed in the first colony of the British Raj. It's called South Africa. I don't know. That's in 1820. So basically, they uh, put the women and the children in one ship and the men in another ship. So it landed there. And I am fifth generation from 1820 from South Indian descent. So they used to speak Tamil at all. So I joined this con there in Durban 40 years ago in 1983. And I entered the Sanyas Ashrami 2009, which is about 14 years ago. And this is my first entry into UA. I was requested about 25 years ago to come here. But somehow, I was a little reluctant. But now I left. So, the um, best way for me to serve you is that if you ask me questions, because then I'll know what you want to know more about. And then I can develop from the different relevant verse from Bhagavad Gita to speak of. I could do that too. I'm inside. What she said? On that one, the group meeting that everybody is very good. Okay. I'll keep it on this, and then this way they'll be able to capture. Dark, you can't see. Screen. Screen cannot be seen. Should I switch on my? I'm not really a okay. Zoom person. I used to get. Yes, right. I'll keep it here so that they can at least hear. They may not be able to see clearly, but you are interrupting it more. Now they cannot see me at all. Can you see that? You have to make the screen a little bigger from your side. Okay. 
So like I have mentioned, that if you ask me questions, then it'll help me to serve you better. Any question. Whether it's politics, whether it's science, whether it's socialism, or whether it's religion, or spiritual life. Come on. And they wait for someone to start. And everyone will follow. Yes, I think you have to tell me your name. Oh, yes, sir, I don't know Padma Devi does. Do you have another microphone? Okay. Yes, yeah, scream. Scream, scream. Should I make you angry? Should I make you angry to scream or are you okay? You can naturally do that. <laughs> then scream more. <laughs> they have to hear you, this people on this thing, you know, is the body. Actually, in uh, lots back then, it's ignorance, foolishness. These are all coming, you know, in the uh, so second canto chapter we read, like that. So people are asking, if we are going to the temple and we are roaming, I don't understand your question more clearly. In other words, when they take darshan, they go around the altar. Yeah. Yes, but you're asking a question about the practice of Krishna consciousness, right? But I want questions more about understanding why we're in Krishna consciousness. See? There may be some of you here that are, are recently joining this group, right? So you may want to know more how come the influence to come here and why. You know. Now, the Lord's form is transcendental from any side. And Srila Prabhupada gave an example of Rasagulla. You know what's Rasagulla? Uh -huh. How many of you can make Rasagulla? with pure cow's milk, not powdered milk. Can make rasagola? I like it. You'll make? Tomorrow? Tomorrow? But, oh, but you, you're chanting japa and everything. Uh, I'll make an exception for you. Usually, I, I'm a little bit more careful who cooks for me. Eight rounds. And, and you offer you all your prasad at home, right? You do, huh? Yeah, I do. What's your name? My name is Anvesha. 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 You look like... Oh, Shukta? Yeah, I can make. And what's that other one? You know that uh, the banana flower? Yeah, mocha. Mocha. <laughs> this is Srila um, Prabhupada said that um, that uh, he, he said it to one devotee called uh, Prabhu Vishnu Prabhu. He said that when you're preaching, you must have the courage of an English gentleman. You know, this British ruled India, they were trying to take over the whole world. So he must have the courage of an English gentleman. And he said, that's when you're going out to preach. And Srila Prabhupada said, but when you come back to the devotees, you must have the heart of a Bengali mother. Very soft. So you have to be humble in the association of devotees. Take care of them. So you know where she stays, huh? Charu. Charu Rukmini. You know? Yeah. What time the Rasagula is going to be delivered? <laughs> Delivery. I'll deliver tomorrow afternoon. Then my husband, um, I don't drive, so. I'm no, 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 no. I want it earlier. I'm getting guests for I'm lunch. You make my 
evening. For tomorrow. I can offer two evening ones. Sorted. Okay. So now uh, quantity. But I don't know how much I can make. How much is there? Oh, what size? Like, uh, show on the hand. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, this much. This much. How many you can make? 10 plus 20 is 30. Because I don't have that much big. Yeah, 20. You said 10 or 20, right? 20 is good. You get milk, not powdered milk, cow's milk. You get. I get it from yeah. the farm. So when you when you when they come to pick up from your home, she'll pick it up from your home. Charu Rukmini, you know her? Stand up, give your darshan. Yes. Good. She oh, she's so your she's guru. Key okay, okay. So she'll pick it up from you and then delivery this evening. Eh? Anytime when you're comfortable. <laughs> what time your Prabhu comes home? Okay, so tell her what time she left. I'm going to drop. We'll talk, ma'am. Yeah, we will. Yeah, evening, eh? Yeah, without fail. Mm. But make sure it's offered before you send. That's the full way of to offer me. Must be offered. Thank you. So Srila Prabhupada said that Krishna is like a rasagulla. Now, when you have this rasagulla, from which side do you start eating? From which side? Say. Which is beginning, which is end? Nothing. Eh? Yeah. So there's no question of Krishna's back and Krishna's front or sideways. Krishna is like rasagulla. There's no way you start from one side or front side and back side. Not like that. So Krishna doesn't have a backside. So Krishna's form is completely transcendental. It is sweetness personified. Good. Next question. What's your name? Pratima. You from way down South India somewhere. Where? Oh, they eat like chili sabji that too. <laughs> this Andhra, tell Telugu people. Proper chili. They grow it. They grow the chili also. Huh? It's the most uh, spicy. spicy chili in the world, right? Yeah, it's like, yeah, but that place. Yeah. So when you eat it, it's like dynamite or something. It explodes. Yeah. So you cook chili sabji too? Chili sabji. Yeah, but I don't take chili. Rasagulla is fine. Question. Your name again? Pratima. Okay, good. When you communicate with? Normal ladies. Out, like uh, women in general. Okay, and then? There'll be other. Yes, yes. So one day my friend was telling Problem. Like uh, uh, they are dropping their kids to. They're dropping the children for class. What type of class? Oh, like within devotee community. So the mothers are devotees. No, but, but they want the children to get spiritual life. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the one lady is from other. Of what religion? But she's sending a child. Well, this asking a question to the uh, Hindu mother. Like, uh, they are friends. Yes. So she was asking about Krishna consciousness or oh, Hinduism. Don't you know to teach the slogan? Why are you sending your kids to the other houses to learn the slogan? No, no. Who is asking that the, 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 the Muslim lady is asking who? Uh, the Hindu parents. 
So how does she know about sloka? How does the Muslim lady know about slokas? How does she know to ask such a question? I don't want, I don't want to... I want to understand your question. How does that Muslim lady, that mother, is talking to the Hindu lady about slokas? How does she know the slokas? She's in our community and that Muslim lady is from South India too. Where is she staying? Yes, uh, like she's from Karnataka. Where is she staying in South yes. India or is she staying here? Yes. So she's Muslim coming from a Muslim community, but she's surrounded by other Tamil mothers yes. or Telugu mothers, Telugu speaking mothers. Yeah. But what language she speaks? So she's Muslim, but she speaks Canada. So she's from Karnataka. So what language she speaks to the other persons from Andhra, Andhra Pradesh? English. English. So all know English. Yeah. So what's his problem? I she is saying that why is the mothers not teaching the children themselves at home? So what is the point for her? No, no, no. It, it doesn't. I need to understand what you're saying. You are saying one mother who who's, who, who can speak English, but she comes from a from like a Muslim faith or religion, is talking to the other mother who's Telugu and coming from a from that faith, you know, like Hindu or Hindi, right? Yeah, yeah. So she's asking, why don't you teach your own children at home? But they are friends. They are. Because only one friend will ask another friend the question. A friend is not based on what religion background you come from. So they are friends. So let that Amma, you know, let that Amma answer to her friend. There's no problem. Your question is, I need a question that like instills spiritual life. So you are telling me how we should answer and respond to this question about why you cannot teach your own child uh, some Bhagavad Gita slokas or Tirukurul slokas or whatever from South India in your own home. That's between them. They're friends. It's not that that Amma from uh, from 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 Andhra Pradesh, you know, speaking Telugu, must come and ask you, how should I answer this Muslim lady? They are friends. See, so it's not a question of converting her from Muslim to Hindu, and she's converting. No, they are friends. They're asking a question about. It's like it's like mothers talk. Mothers talk about the children. Why you don't teach your own child at home? Why are you sending like that? You know, you know, like talking about the children. They're friends. Now you can't go and tell that Muslim lady, why are you asking such question? That's not you'll take broomstick problem, you know. We clear? So uh, Pratima, yes. yeah. You are simple at heart, which is nice. You keep it like that. Okay. Question? Next question. Oh. Name, name. Sunanda. So you need chair. Sit behind. Sit behind. Follow my instruction. Your, your knee, you know, problem. Yes, it's. So, you know, you must, Radharani said you must scream. She was screaming. Scream. 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 She's laughing. See, everyone see? See, she's laughing. <laughs> When you when you laugh, it's good heart massage, so you can laugh. 
See, everyone's laughing. See. The name again? Nanda. Sunanda. Yes, I have to ask again because I'm getting old. Forget. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's an illusion. It's Maya. <laughs> I'm in my mid sixties, in my mid sixties, so it's an illusion. Okay, go on. <laughs> She's saying more. Maybe I'm young at heart. Yeah. Okay. What's your question, Sunanda, Mataji? <laughs> Quality of the humility in our children, grateful humility in our children. Mm. Nice question. You have to expose them to activities of seeing how fortunate they are and others are not fortunate. For example, um, if you have children, right? What age? And seven, boy or girl? Boy, Yeah. So now, you know, sometimes uh, uh, like Diwali will come up, you know, and Govardhan Puja and so forth, you know, during like Kati. Like and some people come in. They're going to the place, the kitchen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come, come. 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 Come, Please keep yourself muted. Huh? We're getting interrupted, but it's a good interruption. It's personalized. Please sit on chairs if you like. Be more comfortable. He's interfering. He's interfering with my flow here. Now I'm going this side. They can't see me. So Sunanda Mataji's question is, how can we get the children to do what? To be? Humility, yes. So I mentioned that Diwali is coming, Lakshmi Puja is coming, you know, like that and so forth, during the month of Kartik. Mm, we got one Bali here. Your son? It's not What's his name? Kesha. Kesha. Hare Krishna. Maybe he's hungry. Take him to the kitchen. So, it's important that we para dukkha dukkhi, that when we feel the suffering of others and we are better than them, but we have to feel that suffering. So then one will become humble. So I'll give you a practical example. It's like you have a son that's 12 year old and a daughter that's seven years old. Now, do they ask you like for new clothes on Diwali? No. So when are you gonna buy new clothes for them again on their request? When do they want new clothes? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, because he's seven years old, but then he'll be nine years old. The clothes will, he can't wear the same clothes. He's growing up. So when will he ask for new clothes? Mataji, as the body grows, the clothes size change. When are you going to buy new clothes again for them? That's what I asked them first. 
Okay. So you're going to do shopping before Diwali day, right? Good? Yeah. So what you do is, uh, do you know any persons in the community that cannot afford to buy new clothes for the children? You know? Yeah. Even if they may not be practicing devotees or new devotees, doesn't matter. You know anyone? Many. Yeah. So if your son is uh, seven, eight years old, or your son is 12, daughter is seven. Yeah. So if, if your son, you, you take him to buy clothes at, you know, when he's 12 years old, so then you choose another uh, member of the community who cannot afford clothes about his age. And you tell the family, look, we'd like to buy a gift of new set of clothes. We're buying some clothes for my son. So if the clothes for your son will normally cost how much? Nice quality. How much? Under what? 50 to 100 zero. What's zero? Oh, the look. Sorry. I'm in Dubai. Yeah. So that is like, what, 3,000 rupees or something? So if the clothes cost 3,000 rupees, then you tell your son, look, I'm taking you shopping for your clothes and we're investing 3,000 rupees to buy for you, which is equivalent to 150 something. Right? But we're taking this other person. So I want you to be friendly to this person and see because they're suffering, they can't afford. And then we'll take them to our gathering, Bhakti Vrikshya gathering on Diwali day. So like that you can preach to so when they children see the suffering of others, then naturally they develop compassion. And when you have compassion, then humility flows. Because the highest feature of love in the material world is compassion. Feeling the suffering of others. And this is in the mood of Sri Prahlad Maharaj. Paradukkatuki. So when your compassion increases internally for others who are suffering, you're not telling them chant Hare Krishna, become vegetarian. You start like giving them a basic need that they don't have, don't have food, clothing, or shelter. So then when, when, you're, when your son sees that, that he's sharing the expenses of his parents to buy new clothes with somebody else, then he'll feel humble because he's becoming compassionate. Yeah. You cannot tell your son or daughter to chant 16 rounds daily. You cannot tell the other person. So that extends what is called a missionary spirit. Yes. Prabhupada wants us to be nice to others. At the same time, that, that family is introduced to Krishna consciousness indirectly by buying some new clothes for their son or daughter. I'm giving an example. We good? Yes. It's not like during Diwali you make so many nice sweets, including Rasagulla. Mm. Right? And then you go to the neighbor and give them and so forth like that. That's a tradition. That's it. We're talking about a need. Talking about a need. So when you fulfill somebody's need okay. of basic food, clothing, and shelter, automatically you give them Krishna consciousness because they become friendly to you. Or oh, you taking me for Diwali to some satsang, to some gathering? Yes. But you must wear your new clothes and come. Because that's the event why we're buying a new clothes, Diwali. They may not understand what is Govardhan, Puja, they may, but they're not Diwali. We are okay. And yeah. like that, you have other activities where you take care of the basic needs of others through the children. So let your children see how others are suffering and they, they don't have any lack. Then they develop compassion and naturally they become humble. See, humility will not be there if you have a false ego that you are better than others. That's false ego. So there's no humility. Okay. No but. You cannot preach people to become humility. Yeah. You have to engage them in activity that they naturally receive compassion to become humble to others. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you another example. So I was with a family in uh, 
is recently I was in Malaysia for seven weeks. And we will go to the Penang state area, which is not Penang. There's a, also an island called Penang. So we have okay. a beautiful temple called Temple of TOD, a Temple of Devotion and Understanding in the state of Penang. So they, so they took me because I, I need to do exercise because of my lower back. So they took me to a park. And I was with Sanyastras. It's a Muslim country. But Muslim from the Sultan way, not like the other way. Not like from like Pakistan or from from here, which is there. And they are like uh, this, uh, this Arab, yeah. They are Sultan, different. So I was walking in the park <clears throat> like that. And one devotee took me, but he was on his phone and so forth. So I was walking. So one local Muslim a couple, they're elderly, like that. You can see they, they're Muslim, but they, but the, the men don't wear the head, head gear. They're like, you can see normal. But the ladies, they cover. And so, yeah. so they saw me walking. And they speak English, so they were asking things like that. <clears throat> so at one point, they asked me, um, because I brought them to the point in our discussion that we are servants, either materially or spiritually, like that. <clears throat> so then the lady asked, so you're making a good point, so how can I serve? <clears throat> so I said, do you have some grains at home? You know, grains? Yeah. So I said, when you come next time to the park, because I see you walking in the park, you give the birds some grains. <clears throat> Here's the birds. So that is her beginning of being a servant of the lower species of life. Because I have to say things according to the mentality and consciousness of people like that. So the man was a little bit more smart and intelligent. He said, but you are a spiritual person. Why are you telling us to do that? I said, God provides for the birds anyway. You don't find a bird going to hospital. And he goes, oh, no, you're making another point. What is it? He's asked me, what is it? So I said, the birds don't need your grains. Isn't it? Krishna is providing. And they don't get sick and go to hospital. Then he said, you mean we are eating the wrong foods? I said, yes, the birds are better off than you are. But I said, when you are, when you are giving the birds some grain, you know, you are serving them. You need to serve. Not that they need your grains. Then the man said, what are you trying to get at? And then I thought, maybe should I say more? Then I said, look, you know, I have to walk one more round and my person who brought me have to go. No, 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 don't go. Don't worry. I have more questions for you. Because what happens is when you make them hanker for more by me saying I'm going to go now, it's better. You understand? It's better. Then I said, let me go and tell him that I have to spend some time with you. But I made it up. I made it up. He's Muslim. So when I came back, he said, uh, what do you mean that I need to serve although they don't need that? So I said, that is God. I said, God doesn't need your service, but you need to serve him to go back to him. He looked at me and said, that's very deep. I said, that's normal for me. Maybe very deep for you. Mm. And I said, generally, irrespective of who is God, what is Allah, Jehovah, Yahweh, Adonai, or Krishna, I said, irrespective of what name you call him by, like that. So I said, this is how you have to do things, like that. They accept it, but I can't go anymore because I can't preach to Muslims in that country. I'll get into trouble and then I can't go in. So I have to be very careful. You're getting it. But I'm getting you, I'm telling you that I'm telling you the spirit of serving that people need to understand. So similarly, your son and daughter need to serve somebody who is less fortunate than them. 
You getting it? So you have to serve according to the need. But this example I give you is that the birds don't need the grains. So they're not serving according to the need, but they need to understand the spirit of service to the Supreme. That's a little different. So you have to, I'm giving you examples that are different for your children. Like Krishna didn't need Arjuna to fight on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Krishna could have killed themselves. And on the universal form, all, they were already dead. But he had to engage Arjuna in, you have to serve me according to my instructions. Not that I want you to fight and kill them. So Krishna doesn't need our service. We need to serve so that we are established in our natural position of Jivara Swarup, Hai Krishna Ranityanas. So that's what you have to inculcate in your children. But they may not do that initially. But they can do it to other persons who have a need. So then the false ego comes down. That, you know, I, I, have so, I have so much to be grateful for that my mother and father are giving. These people are suffering. At least that should be in their consciousness. Not that I'm so puffed up, I'm better than you. Yeah. So when you, when you inculcate in the children that they have to get rid of their competitive and comparativeness, then you become humble. But material education makes you competitive and comparative. It makes you puffed up, push people down, and I'm on the top. That's all nonsense. It's all rascal and demoniac. That's humility. You cannot say be humble. Yeah. If a given activity that brings them to the point of compassion in the heart, and naturally you'll see others as as like, you know, important, not that you push them down. So Nanda, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the difficulty I'm having with you a little bit is that while I'm speaking, you're thinking of other things. So tell me what you're thinking of. Well, yeah, you're not listening to me. You're thinking of something naughty. <laughs> Yeah, you were thinking, yeah, you were thinking, thinking. While I'm speaking, you're not absorbing everything I'm saying. Now what you're thinking about? That is why uh, we don't, uh, we are unable to install these qualities in them. Yeah. yeah, because you want your son to be an achiever and your daughter to be an achiever, that they must top the class. That's wrong. It's very wrong. It's actually demoniac. How much can you work to be better in this world? There's a beginning and end. All you need is to get something to have basic food, clothing, and shelter. So when these children grow up, they can sort of survive in this world. But you, you, if he's a topper, then what happens? Everyone else becomes envious of him. And what happens? His false ego increases. Big problem. See, I did it. I'm better than all of you. What's in his heart? Hard. You are nothing. I'm better than you. Push you down. This is materialistic demoniac education. So you need to inculcate him, even if you are a topper, just be humble. And that person was almost failing, go and buy one nice outfit for the person, even if they don't need it. Show them that although you are a topper in the school, but you know, I, I, this is this is because all of you are less than me, I became the topper. But that's not nice of me, that you are less than me. You shouldn't be less than me. Let me help you now. Sorry, I was shouting a little bit. I can shout more. Are you okay? We should understand one principle. 
that we should never be achievers. Never be. We should be receivers. When you receive blessings and when you receive mercy and when you receive care, affection and protection, you know, we, we, are, we are invoking the mercy of Radha Krishna or the Panchatattva of Lord Chaitanya and the saintly people and the devotees of the Lord. So when you receive like that, then your heart becomes humble, although you may be a topper in the material world, but you don't see others down. You see, I became, a, it's like, it's like if you are number one, there must be a number two, three, four, five, because they're two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the number two downwards made you number one. Because of them, you are number one. See? You're getting it. But then you have to go right to the bottom and lift everyone up. Number one lifts everyone up to become number one. So they have to be purified from being competitive and comparative. It's not very nice. Is that okay, Sunanda? <laughs> What's your name? What's your name? It's okay, take your time. What's your name? What's your name? Anyone knows her? Pai. Pai? Pai. 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 What it means? Anklet. 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 Like the Nupur. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, Radharani, she wears anklet. Yeah. So when Radharani becomes a, mm, like a little bit agitated, you know, agitated means that Krishna is not coming on time problem, you know? And she's waiting. Where is he? So when she moves, Prabhupada says, you know, you know, the, the foot, she, she she makes circle in the ground, you know? And then that anklet, pie, what pie? Yeah, it makes tick, 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 tick. <laughs> So that vibration of that anklet, it travels to where Krishna is nearby. And it's a sign. Come quickly. I'm waiting. What is this? That anklet has a sound vibration. And she moves. She makes marks on the ground. In Chintamani. You know, everything is Chintamani. Hmm. Hare Krishna. Tell me what happened. Speak. Hmm? Who's your friend? I know you're friendly to everyone. That's one thing. But who's who, like friend you can speak to? Who knows that? Raise your hand. Who? She no, not recently. No, she, came she, she didn't come recently. She just came late. <laughs> She's always been there. What's a, what's a feeling? What are you feeling? Tell me. It just, it's just little opening. The little opening is in the language of the heart. What what is that opening? Open the waterfall. Take one sip of water now. I don't swallow the water. Eat it. You know you must eat eat the water. Everyone, together, 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. So raise your hands high, everyone. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. I say Nupur. You know Nupur? Yeah. So when you're a little bit more composed later, then you can tell me. Yeah? Not now. We'll give you some time. Next question. She just joined us with the baby. Sit on the chair. Good like that. Yes, what's your name? Oh. Komal. Okay, tell us. Um, I'm not sure if I can speak. No, no. You see, Komal, don't put screen between me and you. Don't say I'm not sure this, that, right? Now close your eyes. No, close your eyes. Okay? Now you speak freely with your eyes closed. Don't look at me. You speak feel freely without putting screen. Close your eyes. Now speak from your heart. Um, in Bhagavad Gita, it's written that when uh, you're, you know, when you're going to die or your last uh, you mental Lord Krishna, um, you you can go back to. Okay. Right. I want to Keep ask, your eyes closed. <laughs> you speak freely. I want to ask if there are people who follow. There are some people who follow Brahma Jyoti and they follow Parma. If suppose the the person who follows Paramatma and in the end remembers Paramatma, do they still go to God? Everyone please chant. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare So you can repeat after me. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So Kumar has quoted the verse from the Bhagavad Gita. There's two verses, but I'll just... Uh, read the one verse in the purport. And this is Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 8, entitled Attaining the Supreme, text number 6. Oh, you have Bhagavad Gita. Nice. Let's get to it. Come on. Um, you need one copy. Bring your Bhagavad Gita, Revati Gopi. You have copies of Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. I'll do it. I'll do it. No, they need at least between themselves. Hmm. Because we want to reference the verse or verses that uh, Komal Mataji uh, told us. A very important verse. We okay? Okay, so now you repeat after me. Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 8, entitled Attaining the Supreme, text number 6. Okay? Text number 6. Good. So you say a little loudly so that your voices can go through the ethereal region and go to the spiritual world. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Yeah. So you can repeat after me. Yam yam vapi smaran bhavam. Now the next one, the the 
the first two words I'm going to join them. Okay, so it's like this: Tyajat yante kalevaram, tam tam eva iti kunteya, sadatat bava bavitaha. Volunteers, yes. Who say who started? Yes, please. One more. No, no, wait. Um, no, Rarani, not you, the one before. Yes, you, you. Yes, please. <laughs> So now in the word for word, let's say together, beautiful verse as referenced by Kumar. Yam, yam, whatever. Va, api, at all. Smaran, remembering. Bhavam, nature. Tiajati, gives up. Ante, at the end. Kalevaram, this body, tam tam, similar, eva, certainly, eti, get, kunteya, o son of kunti, sada, always, tat, that, bhava, state of being, bhavitaha, remembering, Purport translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Translation. Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, O son of Kunti, that state he will attain without fail. Perfect question. Now perfect answer from Srila Prabhupada. In the purport, Oh, more Prabhus have come. Is it okay there or you want to come in in the back? Yeah. Fine. Please. You came for Prasad too, right? Prasadam is there too. Make sure you take Prasad before you go back to work. He came lunch hour. Right? Now the tie in the back. You have to go back to work. You make sure you eat before you go. Honor Prasadam. What's your name? Deepak. Make sure you honor prasadam before you leave. Okay. It's an instruction. You'll humbly follow that, right? Or you look forward to following it. We have full prasad for everyone. What's the menu? <laughs> I thought you'd speak longer than that. <laughs> Is that okay for today, right? Yeah, next time they'll give paneer. There's no onion here, paneer. You know? Okay. Okay, Radharani. Next time the menu should be a little bit more items. Okay. <laughs> Purport. The process of changing one's nature at the critical moment of death is here explained. A person who at the end of his life quits his body thinking of Krishna attains the transcendental nature of the Supreme Lord. But it is not true that a person who thinks of something else other than Krishna attains the same transcendental state. This is the point we should note very carefully. How can one die in the proper state of mind? Maharaj Bharat, although a great personality, thought of a deer at the end of his life 
And so in his next life, he was transferred into the body of a deer. Although as a deer, he remembered his past activities, he had to accept that animal body. Of course, one's thoughts during the course of one's life accumulate to influence one's thoughts at the moment of death. So, that, so this life creates one's next life. If in one's present life one lives in the mode of goodness and always thinks of Krishna, it is possible for one to remember Krishna at the end of one's life. <clears throat> that will help one be transferred to the transcendental nature of Krishna. If one is transcendentally absorbed in Krishna's service, then his next body will be transcendental, spiritual, not material. Therefore, the chanting of Hare, everyone, loudly. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Is the best process for successfully changing one's state of being at the end of one's life. Does that answer your question? Yes or no? Or partially, right? Yes, now I'll say fully. You see, consciousness is determined on attachment, care, and affection. On attachment, care, and affection. So if somebody is connected to the super soul of the Paramatma, there's no relationship. There's no relationship. So the relationship is with the person. But the Paramatma's function is Upadrasta Anumanta Chat. The Paramatma is like an overseer and permitter. So I'll give you a practical example. Just like you get a game, like uh, Bhavya is doing football today. So in a game, there's two sides, like football. Yeah. But there's a referee in a game. Now the referee, if he's not bribed, if he's a honest fellow. yeah. But the referee has nothing to do with the result of the game. You know, if, if somebody scores more goals, then they will win and the other one will lose. So the referee is not going to enjoy the victory or the loss or suffer the loss. He just makes sure that the rules are played according to the game. You're getting it. So that's Paramatma. Overseer and permitter. The Paramatma doesn't have any relationship with the losing side or the winning side. The Paramatma is completely neutral. So, so somebody to attain the Paramatma without a relationship is not possible. It's not possible. So they, they, they'll only remember something at the time of leaving this body based on affection and relationship and care. Because if you have an attachment to somebody and you care for them, that's love. And you have affection for them. So naturally you'll remember that person or that item or that field of activity that you're most attached to. See? So that person will not remember the Paramatma because the Paramatma is upadrashta, is neutral and just an overseer. So what determines your time of leaving this body, even for an impersonalist or for a Paramatma body, is not possible. Because they have to remember something that they attached. So one time in somewhere in Australia, um, Srila Prabhupada was asked the question. He says, these people who, who are Paramatma bodies or Maya bodies or impersonalists, they cannot remember anything at the time of leaving his body because there's no affection and there's no service that they do for Krishna. When you serve somebody, you become attached. You understand? That you love to serve them and please them. But they don't do that because they don't engage in devotional service. Because Prabhupada is quoting the verse of the 11th canto, Patanti Ada uh, Vimuktamanya. In other words, he says, that these people fall down back to material activities because they don't have any attachment for spiritual activities or devotional service. So then Prabhupada has asked the question in the end, so why do they fall down? 
He's in ecstasy. Maybe he needs some sweets. Huh? That's your... Oh, you want to play with that other baby? Okay. So, so Prabhupada said that when they asked the question, how come that these persons who, who want to serve and worship the Paramatma? Because the Paramatma cannot reciprocate. And Brahma bodies, Brahman, there's nothing there. It's just some energy, you know, like all is one, you know, like that. So Prabhupada said, the reason why they come back to the material world because they cannot be attached to Krishna or devotee or devotional service, he said, is because they feel lonely. If you don't have relationships, you will feel that's also in material life. So either you have spiritual relationships or material. If you don't have spiritual relationships, then you fall on back in the material world because you're lonely. Such a, a, such a simple question, but with a very deep answer. So Krishna consciousness kicks out your loneliness from, from your heart. There's no nidvishesh in Sunyabhadi. Like here, the example is given of Bharat Maharaj, who is a deer. Imagine, in the whole of Bharat Bhumi is named after this king, Maharaj King Bharat. See? Not India, Bharat Bhumi, Punya Bhumi, Bharat Vasha is named after this king. Yeah. And he knew that the culture is that I have to retire to the forest. And hand over succession planning, you know, to my sons to take care now of the for the planet, Bharata Vasha. All planet is Bharata Vasha, not just this restricted land of India. Yeah. But when he went to the when he went to the forest, you know, to go back home back to Godhead. So what happened was it is Krishna's arrangement. He was on a high level of Krishna consciousness called Baba Bhakti. So Krishna arranged this. So like that. So so there was like some roaring of lions, you know, in, in, in the in the forest. So one mother deer, you know, in, in her sort of like uh, anxiety of the roaring of the lion, jumped into the water of the flowing river and wanted to go on the other side. See? But when she jumped because she was pregnant with the baby deer, the baby deer immediately was born and was flowing in the water, helpless. And the mother deer died you know, because of the anxiety. So Bharat Maharaj saw that. Because he's a king, he has natural compassion for subjects. He saw the baby deer was struggling, so he has rescued the baby deer from the flowing river. And he brought it to his ashram. And he realized that the baby deer was motherless, no mother. So he adopted the baby deer, caring for the baby deer, you know, caressing it, and he became attached. Therefore, in the next life, he is remembering the baby deer. Although he was on a very high platform of Krishna consciousness. Yeah. But it's a Krishna's arrangement to teach us a lesson. Yeah. So there must be some affection, and affection comes from being attached to something or someone. That you will remember. Just like, you know, um, if you are very attached to, like, Amitabh Bachchan, you know him? Or, or, or Rajnikant, you know? You understand? But they don't know you. They don't even know you exist. What's the value of such an attachment? They don't even know you exist. See? But if you remember that person you attached to that and he doesn't even know you, there's no value in that attachment. Kick it out. So attachment is there between two persons, is real. 
is like Bharat Maharaj and the deer. She's like a devotee in Radha Krishna and other devotees. We okay? That you'll remember. It's not a question you'll remember nothing like the Mayavadis. For everything is nothing. How is that? You're something you'll remember that you attached to. And you'll take birth according. Clear? So who would you, would you like to remember at the time? <laughs> Lord Krishna. You sure? Yes. Okay. Where are you attached to right now? <laughs> Must I test you? Attached to family and all. Yes, that's natural. Yeah. yeah. So if you attach to somebody who's in Krishna consciousness, then you're safe. So one time Srila Prabhupada was in Mexico City. So one disciple asked Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, it says, Yam Yam Bapi Smaram Bhavam, that at the time of leaving this body, like you asked, if we don't remember Krishna, we may take birth again. Like that. That this disciple said, But Srila Prabhupada, you know, I'm, I'm from Mexico. I speak Spanish. You know, I wasn't born in Bharata Vasha or in any of the dams. You know, I'm like this. Fortunately, I came into contact with you. And he said, Srila Prabhupada, you may say Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but I don't know who is Krishna. But I know you. Then he said, Srila Prabhupada, Krishna is saying like this in Bhagavad Gita, same verse with that, this and other verses. He said, but it's very difficult for me to remember Krishna at the time of leaving this body. But I am a little bit attached to you, Srila Prabhupada. So if I remember you, it is as good, is it as good as remembering Krishna? Like that. So Prabhupada put his head down and he said, Yes. So if you remember a devotee of Krishna, then you'll go to through that devotee's consciousness, you'll go to Radha Krishna. So at least become attached to one devotee on the spiritual platform in Krishna consciousness. It's much easier. What's your name? <laughs> who's senior and who's junior? Huh? You accept that? No. Who's senior? Pratima? She's saying you senior. You accept that? She's more Krishna conscious. She's more Krishna conscious. So she's more senior. Yeah, just defeat her. She's, now she's saying you senior. No. Are you senior or she's senior? Tell us. How? She, she's giving valid reason why you're senior. That you're more Krishna conscious than her. Now that Krishna knows, huh? So how you know Krishna knows? That means you are senior. <laughs> defeated, finished. She has defeated you with her humility. Sorry. <laughs> yes, Pratima. But as you say, just means uh, uh, Paramatma has to do nothing. He is neutral. Uh, yes, but there's three features of Paramatma which I didn't say. Uh, Let me do that first, then it will confuse you more. <laughs> See, Paramatma is super soul. He's like this referee, neutral, right? Overseer and permitter. But the same personality as Paramatma. It's okay. You're going? What about Prasad? What about other Mataji also left? But she's coming back. Don't leave without getting... Please, uh, pack, pack, uh, give them... Mataji, go, go left side. Yeah, left side. Don't go right side. Go, go to the kitchen. Hmm. They're waiting for you. Radharani is there. Radharani, give Prasad. Radharani? Oh, I didn't reinitiate you. Don't worry. 
Rasa Rani, okay. Yes. So, the Paramatma is called the Super Soul in English. But the same Paramatma is also another function called Cheta Guru. Cheta Guru means the Lord in the heart. But the Cheta Guru is not an overseer and permitter. The Cheta Guru means that when you inquire, I'm suffering in this world, where's God? And the Cheta Guru directs you unknowingly to you to devotees and devotional service. Cheta Guru. Now in, in Goloka Vrindavan, there's also the Paramatma as another feature. So there's three features of the Paramatma. One is overseen and permitted, like the example I gave. You can't have a relationship with that. But with Cheta Guru, the Lord in the heart, Cheta means heart, Guru, the Lord. Same, same super soul, but not as Paramatma, but as Cheta Guru. I'm using English word to another Sanskrit word. Not super soul as Paramatma, but super soul as Cheta Guru. So the Cheta Guru sends you to the association of devotees to have relationships with devotees in relationship to the Supreme Lord Krishna, but not to the Cheta Guru. The Cheta Guru directs you. Yeah. You know, sometimes um, sometimes you walk, right? And, you know, and there's like everything is there, but something is telling you don't go that way, but go this way. That is Cheta Guru. But Paramatma doesn't do that. That's neutral. Something tells you, you know, that side is not really, you go this way. I don't think, who is telling me this? Yes. See? And then sometimes you're walking and you're the only person who's walking and it's a little bit in the evening and nobody is around. But every time you're looking over your shoulder, you know, you know someone is there, but you're not fearful. You know, someone is looking, someone is watching me. That's Cheta Guru. Like guiding you. you know, I'll, I'm there for you. I'm going to guide you to the devotees. You understand? Now the Cheta Guru is like Krishna in your heart directly. It's no more that form. form. That's in Goloka Vrindavan. So uh, sometimes you, you'll find that uh, you, you get like what is called Dvija, uh, Dvijas, which means Brahmanas. But Dvija Patnis means wives of Brahmanas. So that's also in the Krishna book. So when, when Krishna and Balram told the coward boys, go to the Brahmanas who's doing the sacrifices and bring some foodstuffs for us. These Brahmanas are so ritualistic in their consciousness, you know. They said, no, we, we didn't even do our yagya yet to offer these fruits and, and, and other boga. We can't give to Krishna and Balram. So they came back, the coward boys are disappointed. And then Krishna said, now you go to the Bija Patnis, the wives of the Brahmanas, and ask them. Yeah? So when they went to the wives of the Brahmanas, immediately when they said, oh, Krishna and Balram went fine. So they took the same boga for offering in the yagyas and the fruits, and they gave it. And this infuriated the husbands, who were, who were like ritualistic Brahmanas. So when the fruits and uh, other things came back for Krishna and Balram, so Krishna and Balram came close, but from a distance, the wives of the Brahmanas saw them. Because they are married, they cannot associate closely. So Krishna entered the hearts as a type of super soul. And they felt Krishna's presence from a distance. So that's in rasa, in this spiritual world. So now I gave more about Super soul Paramatma, Super soul Chaitanya Guru, and Krishna personally as the Super soul entering the hearts, not in form. Yes. Yeah. What's your question, yes, Fatima? Question is answered, right? Sorry, I'm not a mystic yogi or something. I'm just me. What time is Prasad? What time is I'm hungry? <laughs> I'm asking the question for myself. I'm selfish. What time is prasadam? Oh. But I have to serve them. Now there's three hands up from the Prabhus on this side. But this is a Mataji's group. I have one question. 
Yes, yeah, but we'll take that question first. We okay? They have three hands up here, so I don't know what to do. But Mataji's first, right? Right? Mother's first. Mataji's, Amma's first. Yes. What they say in Bengali for mother? Ma. Ma. Okay, Ma first. Yes, Ma. Yeah. You know, I have to take the question first because she's making the rasagula so easy. It'll come out better, you know, with their devotion. We okay? But the rasagula is only for me, not for you. <laughs> yes, Ma. Can Atma understand the happiness and distress? Can Atma? We say that Atma is there, but when we are happy or uh, sad, can the Atma feel the happiness or sad, or it's the state of mind? Keshava. The small baby is doing some kirtan there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, he's singing. Yeah, he's doing he's kirtan. Singing. Yeah. What's her name? His name or her name? What's her name? Shah. 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 Is a rishi. Girl or boy? Oh, this girl is a rishi. Rishi. Yeah, it's is an issue. <laughs> See, happiness and distress are emotions. Ah, emotions. And and in the material world, it's it comes from the mind. In spiritual life, it comes from the heart. See. So whatever you feel through the agency of the mental platform in material life has its originations from the language of the heart in Krishna consciousness. See? Like to give an example, like you get thief in the material world, but the origination of stealing is in Krishna. In Makanchor. But we worship Makanchor. And Krishna is so powerful that he steals the hearts of the married gopis. He's a thief. But we worship. He's Gopinath. He's Gopi Janavalaba. But the same thing you do in the material world is abominable. It's sinful. You're getting it? So similarly, emotions of happiness and distress is originally spiritual. But it's not a state of the mind. That's in the material world. There's nothing wrong in feeling happy and feeling distressed because it's got to do with either material relationships or spiritual relationships. But spiritual relationships are on the absolute platform. So Srila Prabhupada gives an example, a very nice example. He said the closest thing to love in the material world from the heart is the love a mother has for a son. For a son. Yeah. Now, the mother is very happy when the son is with her. But the son leaves, you know, Mumbai, and he goes to study in London. What happens to the mother? Huh? She's not upset. She's sad. She's depressed. You know? Why? Vira. Huh? Detachment. Hey, what's the word you said? Vira. Vira. She's feeling separation from the sun in a distressful condition. But that is another state of happiness. See, Vipralamba and Sambhog is, is actually, Vipralamba means separation, Sambhog means meeting. So, so in Vipralamba, it's like a suffering condition spiritually. But it's not suffering. It's a higher state of bliss, but not in the material world. A prophet gives the example of a mother's love for a son. See? So that comes from the language of the heart. It's not a mental thing. But a mental happiness and distress is all distress. 
Because when you feel happy on the mental platform, you're making others distressful. I'm happy to see others suffering. You're getting it. But when you suffer, others are happy to see you suffering. That's on the mental platform and the bodily conception of life in the material world. So you want to get out of the relativity of happiness and distress and come to the absolute nature where distress is another form of happiness spiritually. Is it too much to digest? But you use the nice word, viraha. I'm feeling uh, separation from the rasgulla. <laughs> I'll be happy when I get it. I'm distressed now. Good. Prabhu, who, who needs to leave here? You. You have to go to work, right? Yeah, what's your name? Deepak, again. Yeah, see, I forget so quickly. Deepak, what's your question? Speak loudly. Hare Krishna. No, they can't hear in the back. Speak loudly. My question is like uh, when we do japa, and no, you are you 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 have to like uh, attend the japa shraya course for that. No, no, that that takes many days. I know. To attend. When you're talking about japa, we have a japa shraya course. Japa course, or I will join the Saturday. He's enrolled. Let me answer your question then about Japa. That question will answer there. Yeah, fine. That okay, Deepak? Thank you. I so see I, your bead bag is saffron color. You have Brahmachari. <laughs> Come, stand up. Show everyone your bead bag. It's <laughs> saffron yeah, color. This guy. He's close, huh? Your, your Dharam Patni is here? Yeah. She's at home. That's why he's, you're asking very nicely, like you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Deepak. Japa Shraya. Close, right? One hand was here. Uh, Hare Krishna. What's your name? Oh, they go to temple to see Arti. <laughs> and some other temple, they go to see Puja. Now then, a girl's name Puja too, right? Okay, Arti. <laughs> when somebody is? <laughs> leaving the body. Hmm. <laughs> It's like this. It's like this. If death is approaching suddenly, and if you attach to your mother, you will say, Ma, isn't it? Same thing. Death is not sudden. Death is inevitable. It will come anyway at any time without any notice. So death is sudden for everybody. See? But it comes like that, and immediately you'll remember to you'll shout out for the person that you attached. So somebody asked a question to Srila Prabhupada. You know, um, they said that uh, uh, Gandhiji, Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, M.K. Gandhi. Yeah. So they said Srila Prabhupada, um, at the time of his leaving his body, he said, Hey Ram. That's famously known. And Srila Prabhupada said, uh, and then they asked, Is that true? And Srila Prabhupada replied, I was not there, I don't know. <laughs> because at the time of leaving the body, it's not exactly that first last breath you take. You know, they, <gasps> and then the, the soul is still there. You ask any doctor, or any medical person, that the soul leaves the body lonely especially in the material world. yeah. But when everyone feels that the soul has already left, but the doctor can come and feel, now the soul is still there. 
Only with the second gasp, when nobody is there, the soul leaves. So therefore, Prabhupada said, I was not there. I don't know. It's medically proven. See? So therefore, it's between you and whoever you are attached to. Right? Or whatever you are attached to. Prabhupada give the example, if you're attached to your money in your safe and not in the bank, then naturally you'll take birth somewhere in the safe as a cockroach. Because it's attached to the money. It'll go inside somehow, you know, get it birthed. But the money is of value when you was a human being. But when you take birth as a cockroach or a rat around there, there's no value to the money. But because it's attached, it's taking birth like that. So don't don't waste your time. I said, okay. Very important to be attached to somebody or someone spiritual or an activity. Like one devotee said, Maharaj, uh, I'm attached to Mahaprasad. I said, yes, at the time of that when you are remembering Mahaprasad, and he said, which type of Mahaprasad specifically you attached to? He said, Paneer Sabji. <laughs> okay. So then he asked me, if I leave my body remembering Paneer Sabji Mahaprasad, where will I take birth? I say, you'll take birth in a Goshala and Goloka Vrindavan. Because it's Mahaprasad. Nice attachment. <laughs> Second question. Can I think how do you I'm asking for myself to ensure you know you have just you but then I feel that I think going up and up. So on the path of devotional service or bhakti, she says that sometimes it goes up and down, up and down. So how should they become steady? Is that your answer? Yeah. The more you align yourself uh, to um, <clears throat> to um, Anukoli and Krishna Anusilan and Bhakti Uttama means we have to serve Krishna as Krishna wants to be pleased. We have to serve Krishna as Krishna wants to be pleased. You understand? So how Krishna should be pleased is the instructions in the Bhagavad Gita. But that's not so easy for you to contact Krishna. But when you read Bhagavad Gita. Okay. So one disciple, he approached Srila Prabhupada and he says, Krishna says in Chapter 9, text 26, Patram Pushpam Palam Toyam Yome Bhakti Prayachit. Offer me a leaf fruit, flower, water. So Prabhupada said, yes, Krishna says, you have to offer these things. You can't offer non-veg things. But the disciple said, my, but my question is different, Srila Prabhupada. He said, if Krishna wants leaf fruit, flower, water, why are we offering him sandesh and rasagulla and paneer sabji? Why can't you just give leaf fruit, flower, water? Then Prabhupada asked him, you don't like paneer? So no, no, Prabhupada, I like paneer. But Krishna is saying like this. Yeah. You, you don't like rasagulla and sandesh? No, no, Prabhupada, I like sweets. Then Prabhupada said, if, then why are you asking me the question? Why you don't only, only eat leaf fruit, flower, water? You eat like that? You offer leaf fruit, flower, water, and Krishna, you eat? But why are you asking this? You know. Shri Prabhupada, I'm asking because Krishna says that. Say, but you're not reading my purport. What, what, is, what is Krishna wants you to actually taste? Like that. So then Shri Prabhupada said very nicely. He said, Krishna gives the principles and the spiritual master gives the details. The discipline gives, the Prabhupada gives the details. So in order to connect with Krishna as Krishna wants to be pleased or Krishna wants to be served, the best way is not even to serve the Guru. 
because he's not so easily available. The best way is to serve the Vaishnavas. And in any place where you are, there's so many Vaishnavas to be served, or Vaishnavis. Do that. And then you'll know your spiritual life becomes steady. That's the secret. If you serve Krishna and you don't serve the gurus like Shiksha and Diksha gurus, Krishna is not pleased. Yes or no? Yeah. But if you serve Krishna and you serve the Shiksha and the Diksha gurus, but you don't serve the Vaishnavas, then the Shiksha and Diksha gurus and Krishna are not happy. So the secret is to serve the devotees. And what's the secret within that secret? Is to serve devotees without discrimination and without prejudice. That's a high level. Slowly we have to come to that. Then your spiritual life becomes stable. That gives meaning to Anukuli and Krishna Anulsin and Bhakti. That gives meaning to that you're serving Krishna and you're serving Krishna's devotees as they want to be served and as they want to be pleased. That's the secret. But this high and low thing, why that happens is because I will serve when I want to serve and I will serve how I want to serve. Problem. One must serve Vaishnavas or Vaishnavis without any prejudice and without any discrimination. Then everything becomes stable. Is that okay? Mataji, I'm hungry. I'm being honest. This devotee, he is looking at me in his hand, he's not like that, right? He's a Maharaj. Mm. <laughs> huh? What's your name? Nanda Kishore Prabhu Ki Jai. What's your question? You were supposed to go, right? Oh, stay, 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 stay. Stay, stay. She can't go. <laughs> Please stay. Yes. And you're wearing saffron today. Nice color. Yes, Nanda Kishore Prabhu. In, uh, in our daily practice, as a sadhaka, you know, when we practice he says, you know, daily practice as a devotee. Yes. Yeah, uh, we, you know, we hear and we say, hear, I. I, 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 yeah. And uh, there is like, uh, I uh, uh, gain understanding or try to gain. So when you hear, you try to understand more about Krishna consciousness. Yes. There's a certain level of uh, uh, understanding I yeah, but you're saying the same thing in different ways. What's your question? Uh, some, days we feel that, that understanding some days I feel, I, not others. I feel that that understanding is missing and, you know, it has to be pumped back again. Like And then other days? I feel philosophically. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Some days I yeah. feel it's. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Krishna consciousness is not physical or sensual. Krishna consciousness is not mental or emotional from the mind side, not from the heart. Krishna consciousness is not intellectual or philosophical. Krishna consciousness is beyond understanding. It's purely in the spiritual platform. We okay? Yeah. So, so you are asking a question from your perspective. I have to understand this. That's what you're saying, right? Not exactly my uh, it's like, for example, I hear I'm not the body, I'm the soul. You're not the body, you're the soul. And there is a certain degree of understanding I try to cultivate. That's the problem I'm telling you. Krishna consciousness is not about intellectual or philosophical. Right? Now, let me ask you a question. Very simple. You you have a mother, maybe she passed on, right? She's there? 
when she was with you, and you may still remember her, I guess. Can you can you tell me how much you love your mother and how much affection you have for her? Can you tell me? Is it this much, this much, this much? Tell me, tell me, measure it, tell me. You cannot quantify it. You got it? The first question. Second question in relation to your mother. Adibol? You cannot quantify it. Are we clear so far? Are we clear so far? Yeah. Now you have children. How many children? How old? Three. Both are three and all. Twins. Kijai. Three and a half. Son and daughter. Two daughters. Two daughters, yeah. Now they are twins. They are twins, yeah. Now, your affection, what's the names? Emangi and Emani. So now, your affection for Emangi and Emani, right? Is it the same or different? A little different, right? <laughs> Who is that? You have my your Dharam Patni is here. Different, right? Because a monkey and a money are two different individuals, although they're twins. It makes it even more interesting. Right? You got it? But your affection for her money and a mangi has her own uniqueness. It's a different uniqueness for each one. Yes or no? It's individual. Right? So can you explain? Can you make me understand your affection and care and attachment for her mangi? And can you make me understand your affection and care and attachment for her money? Can you give me the difference? You cannot explain, right? Because it is beyond understanding. That's called Krishna Prema in the sense of my explaining to you your own experience with your children and with your mother. You okay? So don't worry that one day you will read and hear and you don't understand. Don't worry about it. Another day you'll understand. Don't worry about it. Another day you don't understand. Don't worry about it. The fact is you're not going to cut off your relationship with your mother. The fact is you're not going to cut off your relationship with your two daughters. Yes or no? Similarly, we have to reignite our relationship with Radha Krishna and don't cut it off again. That's what matters the most. That's why we came to the material world, because we have cut off our relationship with Radha Krishna. Now we have to reinstate that and reestablish that. From their side, they didn't cut off. From your side. That doesn't require any understanding. It just requires reinstating a relationship by chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra Japa which will explain more on the course. Looks like the attendance is going to increase in the course. We still have a few. We good? Prabhu? But why are you worried? Your name is Nanda Kishore, Prabhu, right? Nanda Kishore, right? Yeah, you go back to Nanda Kishore. Don't worry about understand. If you cannot fully understand Krishna also, because otherwise you'll take his place, you know? I know everything about you now. Let me take your place. That's not possible. Cannot become the supreme. We okay? Now, Mahaprasade Govinde. Everyone loudly. After me. After me, loudly. Mahaprasade Govinde. Namo Brahmani Vaishnave Swapapunya Vatan Rajan Vishwaso Navajayate Sarira Avidyajal 
Jodan Riyota Hekal Jiba Pela Visaya Sagora Armadia Jiva Ati Lobo Moi Sudur Mati Take Jeta Kotina Sam Sade Krishna Boda Doya Moi Kori Bada Jiva Joy Swapasad Anadilabai Sayanam Ritapau Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gunagal Premedako Shri Chaitanya Nithai Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Srivas Adi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Shri Bhagavat Prasadam Ki Shila Prabhupada ki, Ananta Kodi Vaishna Vrinda ki, Nathai Go Premanande. Huh? How this disappeared? It's all for me. Can't be. Maybe it's for you, right? Oh, that means I'm saved. I can't eat all that huh? for distribution. Okay, I need an Archman cup. Yeah. Archman, Archman. And uh, there's this prasadam like packed for them? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> where, where will they get?